We have the second, if not the third, Sunday in a row where Jesus relies on parables. A lot of times when Jesus was using a parable, he was, people were gathered around him, it's possible he saw something behind the people, a scene, a vignette from daily life, and he said, I will use that as the subject matter as my as my parable. So Jesus was the author of his own parables. He was like a script writer, he was the playwright, he was the novelist, he was a short story writer. He gets to create his own characters and he gets to do whatever he wants with his characters. And his characters today were the kings and the servants. The king represents God the Father. Throwing a wedding feast for his son, Jesus is his son. And note what Jesus does with his character. The king, God the Father. He sends his servants out, go invite people to the feast. Beautiful feast because it was a feast, the wedding feast of his son. And the custom of the day was they would send out people to, to extend invitations. The feast would be prepared and then they would send them out again. And say, no, it's prepared, you can come. Well, the first time the invitation was rejected. The second time when the feast was prepared, it was rejected. And the second time it was, I have to go to the farm. And I have a business to run. So God the Father is inviting him, come into the feast. In the first reading, choice food, rich wine. Come into intimacy with my own son. Come into life with my son. This is what I'm offering you. And the people respond, we've got other things to do. I have to go to the farm, I have to run a business. But more importantly, what Jesus does, how he describes the king, he does not force others to come to the banquet. He was the king. He ruled over all the people. He could have forced the people. You have no choice or else come to the feast or pay the price. Or not even that. I take your liberty away. You must come to the feast. And Jesus is saying, we don't have a father that coerces us into a relationship with him. I give you a choice. I don't impose my love on you. You know, we're entering into an election season. Maybe you didn't know that. Um, and it's noisy. And it's been said about this election, it's the most important election ever. Well, it's been said, that's been said about every election. But every election season, we hear these words, these words, this concept called religious liberty. And we often think of religious liberty as this legal, cultural, social problem. We often think of religious liberty as we as Christians, we just want to remain or keep our religious dominance, our Christian dominance. It's not that at all. Religious liberty is about biblical justice. Very much like our readings, religious liberty really is about the state, the government. You do not have a right to coerce my relationship with God. It's rooted in the nature of God and in the nature of the human being. It's rooted in the dignity of the human being. God invites us and creates us to be in relationship with him. And he craves to be in relationship with us. It's like I said, he doesn't impose it because if he imposes his relationship on us, if he coerces us into a relationship, it's not love. So that's why, at this time of the year, you'll hear us speak about the importance of religious liberty. That no government 
can interfere in our relationship with God. If the government does, it elevates itself above God. So again, it's not about maintaining our Christian dominance. It's more than that. And they are fighting words. How dare anyone insert itself, or himself, or herself, into my relationship with the Father and the Trinity. The, uh, so the Father comes and searches to us and he invites us into this. Jesus invites us into this, this type of relationship. And we know that our religious freedoms a lot of times are under assault. Recent Supreme Court cases, other decisions, other laws. And we pin our hopes now on candidates and political parties. What Jesus is saying to us, don't put your hopes in human institutions. Don't put, place your hope into fair laws. Don't place your hope into political or election outcomes. And don't place your hope in friendly Supreme Court justices. Place your hope in a person, Jesus Christ, who pursues you every day, invites you every minute of every day to come to his feast. Come to life with him. Come to relationship with him. And like Paul said, reading today, that you are fulfilled and you have everything that you need.